For those of you that aren't aware about remote viewing, there this was something that was brought forward in the disclosure circles many uh, several decades ago. And what they do is they will um, they will have so the the one that the documentary was made about was that they would take a person, they would go through a bunch of experiences, and then they would um, have a room full of people, like six or more people. Um, go into, um, do some breathing, go into a meditative state and focus on that person and see what, and, and draw out whatever kinds of data start that would just come. So they're stilling their minds, they're stilling their bodies, they're putting them, they're shifting themselves into being in that parasympathetic response, which means your body's in that rest, digest response. So you actually can be in observation mode. And then they start um, they, they will follow the certain prompts and then start sketching out the different things that they see. And in the group of people, what would happen is that there are figures and images that are similar to each other. And that is where, where those overlaps are. That is um, a very high percentage of the time, um, an accurate, an accurate um, depiction of what the person was that they were, I guess you could say, tracking into. Now, they they are usually given a very specific experience, and and uh, remote viewing has been used for espionage as well, where people are going into buildings and reporting what they see. They're reporting different structures. Now, it's a this is a kind of tracking, but not really, not in not in the way where you are using all of your capacities. It's usually visual uh, and it, it's usually visual and there's some other data sets in there too, but they're mostly visual, hence the drawing and stuff. And the problem with that is, the problem with the visual specifically is, is that our third eye hypothalamus and um, pituitary complex has a lot of um, toxins and poisons in it. And what that what that does is that it creates distortions in, within the intuitive center. Now, when I talk about this, it's very unpopular. A lot of a lot of intuitives don't like this, or a lot of light workers or whatever schools of thought don't really like this because there's entire mystery schools dedicated to opening the third eye. But in the teachings, the indigenous and wisdom teachings that I've been exposed to, that's the very opposite thing you should be doing to cultivate your intuitive awareness. The third eye is the last thing that needs to be coming online. Okay. And it's because of that, that heart mind connection disconnect that I was just mentioning earlier. This is not, this is, this is not a clear channel by itself. It needs to be balanced with other aspects of your being. Okay, so the intuitive work, the way to enhance your psychic intuitive abilities, according to the different masters that I've been nurtured and cultivated by, it all starts with your sacrum. It all starts with your base, because when your base is clear, then you know the feelings, you'll know yourself, you'll know, you know, you have, you've gone through the different practices of self-discipline to truly experience and know thyself, okay? And that, and, and that's because to clean out the lower chakras or the, the if we're going to use the chakra model. Now, those of you guys that, are, that work closely with me, you know that I don't like that chakra model for, because there's many different um, mechanisms and programs that are perfectly suited for those models. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I prescribe more to the Taoist and the, um, the ancient Laika model, which is three centers. There's the three centers are the, um, the upper Dantian, the middle Dantian, and the lower Dantian being the space between the navel and the, and the, and the um, sacrum. Okay, so by cultivating that, you are clearing out the base in such a way where you get to know thyself in a very deep way, and you, and in that process, you've learned what stillness is. Okay, you've learned the art of observation. You've learned actually how to dip your awareness into the unknown. And anytime you're tracking something, 
you are, your intention is to go somewhere you don't already know, which is to go into the unknown. Okay. So, um, so the toxins in the upper intuitive center creates distortions. It inverts things. It um, fractalizes things. I'm talking about the visuals now, right? And the part of the psychic intuitive um, center um, within the, the center of the head, which these three glands make up, um, the one that is responsible for creating visuals that you're creating the visuals that you see is the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is extremely vulnerable to heavy metals. It's very, it's vulnerable to, um, to environmental toxins in general, there's all different kinds. So what that means is that be, when the toxins build up over time, which they do because we're surrounded by it, it's everywhere, it's ambient these days, um, and you're not, and you're not necessarily living a lifestyle of detoxification, you know, the, the visuals are going to be impacted by the toxins. And then you also have other interdimensional, we'll just call it fuckery involved too, which, you know, which means past life, um, what, what we perceive as past life mystery school initiations. There, um, during the darkest of times, there were mystery schools that were purposely putting implant technology into the intuitive center so their, so their priests and priestesses could have direct communication with certain beings, interdimensional beings. Some of these interdimensional beings were benevolent and some of them weren't. Okay, those kinds of constructs don't go away. They stay there until they're removed. This is the thing about interdimensional work, energetic structures. They, they're there until they're removed. They're not just there only when you remember that they're there. If, if they're there for a while and you know about it, great. Then now you, you know eventually when to look out for signs when it's becoming a problem. What happens is that between lifetimes, this is a certain perspective, right, of lifetimes, we don't remember when we come into the next that, that's there. So that means that architecture within the within the light body, because of those you know because of those different initiations and implant technologies, it now recedes or um, goes into the subconscious and becomes buried, and we don't know it's there. Okay, so those that that kind of thing is um, heavily influencing our intuitive complex. There's another thing that influences our intuitive complex, and um, I've heard it called karma. I don't like that term at all because um, as we move more into the new paradigm, karma is has been revealed as a construct as well, and it's actually optional. It's not something that you have to. It's not a rule or a law of the universe. A lot of people teach it that it's a law of the universe. It's not true. And actually, I don't I don't like that word law at all because it's it's not accurate to how the universe, the mechanics of the universe works. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, they're trying to they're trying to um, describe that there are mechanics going on. There's there's certain ways that things work. That's what they're trying to describe. Versus um, a lot of times it's presented as a law, as in there's no other thing than you know what I mean. That's like the highest authority. It's not. Okay, sorry, I digress. Let me get back to. So what has happened is that during some of the um, darker times, especially in Egypt and Atlantis and other sorts of highly advanced societies, is that the um, psychic intuitive abilities, particularly um, the telekinesis, teleportation, and other sorts of skills that come with having a fully activated or at least activated light body to a certain, to a certain threshold, they, these people that were initiated into this role were used to transport substances interdimensionally from Earth to other external places. Um, some have memories of transporting gold to Nibiru. Some have memories of transporting sacred minerals to motherships, stuff like this. And the problem with that is, is that it is taking the telluric realm, the mineral kingdom, and fractalizing it out further into the dream, into the external reality. 
So the telluric realm, which is a deeply internal space, it's the space that makes, you know, the, the telluric nesting dolls of wisdom is what holds these bodies, part of what holds these bodies together. It's what this planet is held together. And when we are taking vast amounts of gold or crystals or ore or whatever, and we're taking it out of the earth and transporting it something further into outer space, okay, then we're, we're, we're contributing, we're participating in fracturing the telluric realm and fractalizing it further out. And that has a very significant impact on consciousness. Okay, so what 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 I'm talking about is um, fra uh, soul fragmenting. The beings that were initiated into doing that and did that during lifetimes in those different um, ages of those civilization have very significant soul fracturing from those activities. And until that gets cleaned up, it's going to stay fractured. That's the whole, that's the whole rub about these, these, um, these experiences is that, you know, we continue, we go down, we fall in consciousness, we, we fragment, fragment, fragment. In order to heal from that, we have to recollect our fragments, <laughs> reintegrate them and, you know, anchor them, of course, into this bio suit, which is a really power, powerful, powerful thing to do. Okay, so that is a major factor. And this is something that went on for a lot, you know, thousands and thousands of years. So you can imagine, and maybe you can feel right now sitting here listening to this, that maybe you were one of those people that were initiated into that role. You know, raise your hand if this resonates, right? So there are a lot of things at play in the, in the shutting down our, our multidimensional senses. And in the process of tracking, you need to have your multidimensional awarenesses available to you. But the, the, the natural way that we be, as in the way that we need to be in interacting with this reality, is kind of the opposite of how you need to be when you are in, how you need to be within yourself when you're going into a tracking experience.